Yo, what is going on guys? Savage here. Today we're bringing you guys another viewer submitted gameplay. Basically in this series, viewers submit their gameplay to me. We all go through, we break it down, we analyze it, we point out the mistakes that they make, we point out the mistakes that common players make, and we point out the mistakes that the enemies make that they end up killing. And this kind of gives you an opportunity to sit back and watch and learn exactly what the players are doing in the game. Because normally if you load into a game, you just kind of run and gun and shoot and you die, you back out, you don't think much into it. But if you watch this series, you get to see the decision-making process as it happens, and we get to correct it and alter it to make all of us better players. Guys, we've been getting a lot of support on this channel recently. The comment section is insane. People telling me their wins have doubled, tripled, quadrupled. This is awesome. I'm really glad to see this series actually helping people. And if you guys happen to remember, I would love to hear what your stats were before you started watching the series and what your stats are now. But guys, anyway, we are 400 subscribers away from 40,000 subs on YouTube which is absolutely insane. So thank you guys for the support. Let's make that goal. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Join the Wolf Pack today. Also, leave a like on this video. We're going for 600 likes and feel free to follow me over on Twitch. The link to that will be in the description below. Also, quick note, if you guys are interested in having any of your gameplay submitted and reviewed on the channel, make sure you read the description. I will give detailed instructions on how to do so. But without further ado, let's dive into the video. We're spectating my dude Wolf Run and he is landing over here by the bunkers close to military. Guys, if you're not familiar with the landmarks that I'm giving you guys, make sure you guys are trying your best to memorize what I'm saying or other YouTubes as well. Knowing landmarks is extremely important if you're trying to go in duos, trios, or quads because team callouts are a must. But team play is going to be for another video later this week, so we will focus on solos. We've got a guy right here shooting at something. Not really sure what's happening. I wonder if he killed somebody else. Uh, that was pretty self-explanatory. I like the fact that he went ahead and picked out that someone was shooting on the mini-map. If you see, there's another guy out here doing it. Um, if you're close to him and you have a gun, make sure you go out there and get the kill. Very easy kill on his part. Good stuff. Now, I I probably wouldn't have gone out there to get the loot. One, you're kind of in the open. You really don't have much loot already. So if you get in another fight, you're kind of you're kind of screwed because you don't have much cover. Um, and two, the guy you just killed just landed. We're at the beginning of the match, so you know he didn't have anything on him except for pistol ammo and a pistol. Just kind of decision making like that could save your life potentially, but he seems to be pretty clear. Um, so let's see what happens. Well, I spoke too soon on that. Keep going. I'm not always right. I'm not always right. All right, good shots, man. I love the fact that he instantly goes to the rock, takes cover, and then peeks and chows that dude. I probably would have at least popped the plate, but it worked out. The guy really wasn't a good shot, so you're able to annihilate him pretty quickly. Guys, when you jump into the map, you want to go ahead and decide what you want to do from the game. And it could change game by game, just depending on uh, how your landing goes, depending on where you land at, and depending on the loot that you're able to find, if you're able to get your stash. But once you take those variables into account, you need to decide, do I want to go for high kill games, or do I want to play for the win? Um, bounties is the best way to play for kills, in my opinion. Every time we go for a bounty, we end up running into another team or two anyway, so you're able to rack up your kills pretty quickly. Plus, again, I love the fact that these bounties are in here because it gives your mind something to focus on and gives you kind of a purpose to play. Instead of just running around aimlessly in a circle, not really knowing where to go and kind of getting caught up, you're actually able to go after targets um, and get momentum in the game. So a lot of people avoid going to bounties that are in military, but I love military. Military is really not a hard place to fight. It can be a pain in the ass if there's a lot of people around, but because of all the cover, because of all the buildings, because of all the windows and different avenues you can push each other, uh, it's a very easy area to actually navigate and play. All right, so this guy is running away, but we did hear glass break. So I love the fact that he instantly, instead of tunneling the bounty, he's going to go for the guy that's closest to him. Smart play. The other guy's running away. Um, you're not probably not going to be able to catch him anyway. And at the end of the day... All right, good aggression, good jumping in there. I don't know why I didn't hear you, but he didn't. Um, and then at the end of the day, guys, even if you're trying to go for high kill gameplay, you want to get your load out. You've got to get your load out. you got to get it quick. So the fact that you couldn't catch the bounty in the first place, I love the fact that you just dipped. Um, now you have $9,100, loot a couple tents, get your loadout, call it a day. Also, guys, pay attention to your mini-map. If you notice on the mini-map right here, there is a red dot notifying you that there is an enemy to the north. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is because instead of going after the bounty, you could throw an audible and go get that kill. I definitely wouldn't leave military right now. You have $9,100. You're $900 away from getting your loadout. Um, like I said, chasing this bounty down, you've got 53 seconds. Chasing him down on foot, you're not going to make it. You, the bounty the bounty will expire before you make it there. Um, but, you know, if you want the kill, go get it. Basically, just because you have a bounty doesn't mean you have to go after. If it's an easy kill or if he's sitting up in a place and you know you can get the kill, cool. But if he's running away, time running out, there's really no reason to push him unless you have a vehicle. 
chasing them down on foot is going to be a little uh little crazy and and here's here's one reason why i'm kind of nervous for our dude wolf right so if this bounty was a decent player doesn't have to be great just a decent player he'd be aware that right now he's level three right so he has immediate danger so he knows that our dude wolf is coming up on him all right so the guy's in this little shack there's a door right here you're in the open you have no cover you have no hill coverage at all this makes me extremely nervous i know why you did this you're pushing him straight on because you have 10 seconds left on the bounty i get it but remember, I don't want to put myself out of position. I don't want to risk my life just to get a bounty completed. What I would have done was basically flank from the right. I would have come up from the right side of the map using trees and ridges and the hill just to try to like have some kind of cover. And then if the bounty expires, yeah, you lose out on that money. But guess what? You're still know where he's at. You're still going to have a chance to kill him. And then when you kill him, he's going to probably have money on him. Even if he doesn't, that's an extra kill for you. Then you're sitting at four kills with 110 people left. That's a good spot to be in. Now you gotta be careful. I like the fact that there's this wall right here. I'd probably just sit here for a second and figure out what he's doing. I don't think this guy's gonna sit in here. He's gonna have to leave the building. There is a door on the other side, so he could just dip out. He could go to the left, he could go to the right. So if he does go to the left or right, I wanna kinda sit by this wall just for a hot second. You don't have to sit here for five minutes. Just sit here for five, 10 seconds, see what he does. Try to bait the enemy out. If he doesn't move, then he can push in. But if he does come out, you don't wanna be vaulted over this wall, exposed, and he gets the shots off on you and kills you. There he is right there, going off the right side, up there. Hill out in the open, and you were doing work with that ram, brother. Now you've got the bounty money. Again, it's all decision making. He went with his move, he put himself in the open. All right, so despite what I said, everything worked out for him. He's got $1,700 and he's sitting real pretty. Sitting really good right now. He can get a self-res, he can get a UAV, and he can get his loadout stash. He's got a lot of money to do a lot of things with. I really love and hate this area. I love this area because one, no one's ever here watching it, right? It's very rare I ever see anybody in this area, period. Um, but on the flip side, this is out in the open. So if somebody is watching this area, you will die. There's just nowhere to go, there's nowhere to hide. You have to really rely on your shot and your gunplay to outplay the enemy because you legitimately have nowhere. This is probably the most exposed buy station there is. But again, with saying that, no one's ever here. All right, we're rocking the Damascus on the bad bitch. We got it going. All right, guys, I for one love the VLK scope. There are some guns I'll iron sight, the M4 I'll iron sight, the Grawl I'll iron sight, but other ARs and LMGs, I'll definitely prefer the VLK sight. Now, when it comes to picking the sight for your gun, you really have to account for recoil. If you iron sight the Grawl, you're going to have very little recoil. However, if you put a VLK on the Grawl, it will jump your recoil up a little bit and make it a lot different to shoot than what you're used to if you were using iron sights. Same thing goes with every gun, right? You put a scope on there, it's going to increase the recoil a little bit because you increase your zoom. So basically, in simple term, the gun bounces every time you shoot it. It kicks, right? And the kick doesn't change based on the scope. But what happens is, with the zoom, you're seeing a bigger picture, so it zooms in more, so the kick appears to be higher. Uh, which doesn't make it harder to control. So if you're iron sighting and you switch to the VLK to get a little bit more zoom and you realize your shots just aren't hitting correctly, that's probably why. That's one of the reasons why I took the VLK off the M4 is because the M4's got so much kick that the VLK on, this, on the gun is just, it's not impossible to control, it's doable, but I definitely prefer the iron sights. All right, so we're doing a quick sweep of the heartbeat. We don't spot anybody there. Enemy in front of him. Now, this is something I want to freeze on because we've been hitting it a lot in my videos. Choose the right gun for the right fight. Granted, he just spotted the enemy. He'll probably switch his weapon. But guys, remember, the MP5 at this range, no bueno. Learn your weapons. Learn the range of your weapons. That way you can decide better when it's time what gun you need to use and what fight. So he switches to his VLK AR, and he does something awesome, amazing. Look, I know I'm stopping this video a lot. Let's just, let's just play by play. Trust me. Right? Trust me. So again, with the weapon swap, boom. Whips the VLK out, and he doesn't shoot the enemy. And I always tell you guys to stop hesitating when you shoot the enemies. However, the enemy is so close to this wall right here that if he did shoot him, he wouldn't be able to kill him because the guy was could run past the wall, get healed up, and then you've now alerted the enemy exactly where you're at. Then he'll be on edge, and it really is a 1v1 fight. The trick to this game is surprise your enemies and hit them when they don't see you coming, right? And then he started shooting once the enemy changed his angle and ran straight at him. Great decision making right there on that. Swapping to the AR, not shooting the target because he was close to cover, and then instantly calling the audible. 
whenever he ran at you. Great decision. Now, he'll probably get self res before you can make it to him. It's solos. He went down. He's got self res. So, he'll probably get self res in time. All right, you're getting shot from the right side. So, he's got to be in the right bedroom. Or there's another person in the house, which I would highly doubt. Oh, shit, boy. Thank God he was one tapped. Look, guys, in the position that he was in, he had no armor. He just self res and he was in a very bad spot. Um, Wolf didn't push in instantly. He had a second. If I would have been the enemy, I would have run out the house and played the outside while I was plating, kind of played back and forth while plating, listening to the audio and trying to figure out where he's going. That way, hopefully I can be fully plated and challenge him to a 1v1 fight. I know a lot of people panic when they have broken armor and they just go prone and they freeze there. If you're being pushed immediately. Don't just lay prone. Don't just sit there, not plate your armor. Leave the building if you can. Try to change your angle, try to get some cover, plate up, and then fight. Don't hide in a corner. Don't hide next to a bed. Don't do that because you're, well, one tapped. He literally shot him one time, hit fire with MP5, and took him out instantly. All right, so basically, I would go ahead and get my ghost class and head out. Now, I want you guys to make note, dude. This is very sketch. I think there's somebody in this building. And you might be like, Savage, how do you know that? Because there's a vehicle right here. And... Yes, it could have been the guy he just killed, but the guy he just killed was running from the left side. He was running from over here, if you look at the mini-map, right? This is where he came from, ran into this house, and boom. I think there's a guy in Yellow House. That or he, or he left early. We'll see what happens, but there's a vehicle right there. Make sure you're aware of where the vehicles spawn at. Something to learn. The vehicle's pulled up next to the house. It's not a spawn. I guarantee you that, and that's exactly where that vehicle's placed at. So I'm a little on edge right now. I don't hear any footsteps. Holy shit, there are four crates. Minimum. There might be crates behind that. There's at least four crates. Yeah, there's four. I guess there's nobody in the yellow house. All right. And, you know, that's possible, too. They can pull up today, get their stuff, and roll out. And, you know, but still, be on alert. Make sure you're very observant of the vehicles and their placement. So I would basically, at this point, um, pull up your map, guys. I want you guys to start pulling up your map whenever the circle's about to close in. We haven't seen the big map at all. I have no idea where the circle's rotating to. I have no idea where the next zone's at. I have no idea what the map even looks like. Um, so basically, whenever the zone's about to close in and you're safe, AKA in a building, pull it up real quick, kind of get a game plan, zoom in to where the safe area is, and then go with your play. Ha <laughs> ha! I knew it! All right, so there's a player right there, right? This player should have killed Wolf. Wolf had no idea he was there. He didn't even look at the windows, didn't go in the building. He should have killed Wolf. He had the advantage. If he was in the second floor of the building, he could have just shot out the window and shot Wolf in the back while he's getting his loot. I don't know what this guy was doing to where he didn't hear the gunfight going on next to his building. I don't know what this guy was doing when Wolf walked next to the building with his footstep audios. I don't know what this guy was doing when he was sitting there getting his load out. This guy right here fucked up. He messed up, boys. Um, it's gonna cost him his life. So guys, if you're in a situation where you're sitting in a building, don't just lay there and be afraid to look. You gotta look around. If he would have just looked a couple times, he was by the boxes for a good 10 seconds. So that could have been an easy kill for the other guy, but rip him. Rip him. All right, so we've got the full map out. Oh, I hate circles like these, man. I hate it because it's, it's halfway on a ravine. It's halfway on a ravine, right? Uh, the ravine to the right right here and the ravine to the left right here. I don't really know the exact term of it. We're gonna call it a ravine. It could be a giant gutter, who knows? But basically this little, this little slit in the land, um, separates the circle, cuts it almost directly in half. And then you know, on one side you have promenade and one side you have downtown. Uh, downtown endings suck. Downtown endings suck. And then on the other side you have hospital and promenade. Promenade's not that bad, train station's not that bad, but hospital's a bitch. This entire circle's gonna blow. This is an older match, apparently, because stadium's still intact. I didn't know that, but that's fine. Um, stadium's still intact, so stadium being how it is right now, especially, I would definitely avoid the top right-hand corner of the map. One, just stay away from downtown. Now, this is Solo's. Um, I hate downtown and solos because you know damn well there's gonna be some asshole sitting on a rooftop, sitting in a stairway, waiting for you to come by so he can shoot you in the back when he sits in the corner, sitting there ADS on the doorway for three minutes. Can you feel my pain? Can you feel my pain? So basically, uh, in solos, I will avoid downtown at all costs unless I'm forced to go in there due to in circles, due to bounty, due to flag, due to whatever the hell it is. Um, unless I'm being told to go there, I'm gonna avoid it. So I would definitely avoid this area for sure. I would just rotate over here. One, you could chase down this bounty, get some kills. I love most wanted bounties. It's it's such a great thing. When you can go from most wanted to most wanted to most wanted and just knock them out like that, one, money flow is way better. And two, easy on the kills, right? You don't even have to pick up an objective. Now you are far away, but you have vehicles. Um, unfortunately, no trophy system as of yet. Hopefully this guy does. 
But yeah, I would definitely play this area of the map or train station. It just depends. I prefer this. I prefer the promenade train station side without a doubt. Um, you can take the vehicle up the hill. You can shoot people coming out of titties. You can shoot people coming out of TV station. You have an angle on everything. So hill isn't a bad play. But remember, when you're on a hill, you run the risk of getting shot in the back, right? Because the hill's pretty exposed. Whether you're on the left side of the hill, you're still vulnerable to the entire 180 degrees of the left side of the map. And on the flip side, the right side of the hill, you're also vulnerable from 180 degrees of this side of the map. So be careful playing on the hills. Even though you have trees and stuff, it's easy to snipe people over there. But again, uh, you've got good momentum. You've got six kills already. There's 64 people left. Just keep hunting down kills. Grab the, grab some bounties. Hunt the most wanted. Something. I definitely probably would have taken a vehicle. For sure. Because it's such a wide open area you're going to be running through. Uh, the ice lake. Um, airfield. Depending on what angle you go. Or even next to TV station. It's just somewhere I prefer not to be on foot. Because you're just so vulnerable. I, I swear it's like I say something and then it happens right after. So I don't know what this enemy is shooting at you with. But... You don't have to run, fam. Let's rewind a little bit to where he's on the minimap. He's right here. He's right here. He's got to come to you. You got a building you just passed up right behind you. Yo, I would hug that building wall, play the wall, wait for that asshole who was sitting there waiting for you. That shot you in the back. How dare he? I'll wait for him to leave cover, get in the open, try to move, trying to move out. And then I would shoot him in the face. Um, he's got to move before you do. Don't let him get away with that. Do not. Easy kill right here, boys. Easy kill. Unfortunately, we're bailing out. Again, yes, the circle's closing in, but remember, this is the second circle. This isn't the first one, so you can afford to fight a quick fight and then jump in the vehicle and dip out. But if you prefer to bail, that's fine, too. So now we're in a vehicle, and we're heading to... Not gonna lie, I didn't see what he marked. I wasn't paying attention. Bad on me. Shame on me. Get some Fs in chat for me, boys. What a fail. What a bad. What a bad YouTuber. Terrible. All right, so here we are going to the rooftop over here. This is normally where a buy station's at. Um, I like going here. There's usually people here you can kill. So, we've got a car right here that's leaving. Um, nobody shot at him. There were no gunshots. So, you can kind of assume that there's probably nobody around. Um, I say you should probably assume that just to kind of let you relax a little bit and focus up on what you want to do next. But, you always want to be on edge. You always want to be ready for a gunfight. Um, again, I love bounties. Bounties are great in this. I would definitely go up on the roof and try to get that bounty up there for sure. Now, you advance players. Throw the trophy system on the car. Drive around and get a lot of kills. Yes. You really don't need bounties because you're you got the aggressive mindset. But I want newer players who are getting good at this game, who are below one KD, below two KD. I want you guys to take it slow. Don't just hop in a vehicle and go at people because you're gonna put yourself out of position and you're gonna kind of jump the gun. You're not gonna learn rotations, you're not gonna learn positioning before you try to get to fights. That's why I always recommend bounties. If you get a bounty, you can kind of see where he's at and you can kind of practice the rotation before you actually push the enemy. That makes sense. Um, then once you start getting a lot of bounties, then you can throw a trophy system on the vehicle and start bailing out. All right, this gun's got a little kick to it, uh, especially at range. Um, that just comes with practice, right? You just got to practice recoil control. You just got to practice um, how to shoot this gun at range. Tap firing, it definitely isn't a bad idea. Uh, you can do some damage with this gun, especially in a tap fire mode. But as far as full auto spraying it like it's a Grawl, probably not the play. Easy kill, self-explanatory. Now, look, if you're the enemy in that situation, you have to run across. I would have beeline towards a vehicle. There's so many vehicles right here. Assuming that player had no idea Wolf was sitting on the roof, I still would have went for the vehicle if I was the enemy. That way, I didn't have to run across this open-ass field. I could have just dipped from the wall, run to the vehicle real quick, and then drove to safety. It's way harder to get shot out of Big Bertha than it is to get popped in the head when you're out in the open field. All right, so this is a great position he's in. Uh, he's got the edge of the circle. It just happens to be past the bank where the bounty's camping at, right? The bounty's got a minute and 59 seconds. The circle's got 20 seconds before it collapses. Um, he's going to probably have to be forced out here relatively soon. So uh, basically, the bounty's screwed. As long as you hit your shots and don't get outshot, this should be an easy kill. You have the high ground advantage. You have positioning advantage. You have all the advantage in the world. He's got to wait for him to leave this wall, which he's going to have to do. This is a great way to gatekeep, guys. Remember, if you want to gatekeep the enemy, sit on the edge of the circle. Make sure that they get forced out. Still 45 enemies left, so there may be other players nearby. There's one guy to the right over here. I don't know if you saw that or not, but there is a guy to the right. He sees him. Let's go. Again, I, I'm not going to hate on the way you shoot that gun. Um, that gun has a lot of recoil. I don't use it because it, it kicks a lot, right? Um, again, it's personal preference what you want to use. Now, what did we just say? We said something about gatekeeping, right? The bounty's got to leave. I think the bounty would be a better target to go for. I think I would prefer the bounty because he's about to get in the open. What you don't want to happen is waste all your time shooting at the guy you're shooting at right now. And while you're fighting that guy, the bounty sneaks up on you, and then has a chance to outplay you. 
Do not let the bounty get close to you. I really hope you rotate and fight the other guy. This is where tunnel vision just doesn't doesn't pay out. Right here. So this guy's in the open. He's got to find him and shoot him. He's probably already closer to you, but you can't see him because the bounty hasn't updated on the minimap yet. There he is at the gas station. Now we're in a position where he could possibly outplay him. Unfortunately, you let him get closer to you. Bad call. Also, uh, as far as jumping down, I probably would have jumped on the roof of the gas pumps. I wouldn't have jumped on the actual ground and put myself in a vulnerable position. I would have jumped on the roof of the station right here and waited for him to leave this little shed uh, and or threw some C4 in there and shot him. So now you're putting yourself in a position where you're on even playing field with him. You're both on ground level. You have crack plates. He doesn't have crack plates. So you're in an unfortunate position right now. Hmm. It's an unnecessary fight. It's an unnecessary loss. Um, again, we knew the bounty had to leave cover. Make sure you're paying attention to the mini map as far as knowing where the bounty has to go or a player in general has to go. And then make your decision based off that. I never would have shot at the guy to the left ever. I would have remained somewhat focused, not tunnel vision. I would have been scanning the rest of the area, but I would have remained focused on the bounty that because I knew we had to leave position. Uh, unfortunate. You could have had your eighth kill right there. You could still be alive with your loot. So now we're looking at, you know, mid to end game situation. You got to come back into downtown area. It's not looking too, too hot. A position you really don't want to put yourself in. All right. So here we are, the Dragon Offs. I hate the Dragon Offs. It is what it is, though. Um, I don't know what they were thinking when they put the Dragon Off in the Gulag. What? The dude didn't even mean to kill you. Did you see that? The dude legitimately did not even mean to kill you. Hey, let's slow this down and watch this shit play by play. Holy f Let's mute the game volume too. So look, this guy legitimately aims shot and then ADS and drag scoped. I think he, I think he actually hit the trigger. What a shot, bro. I mean, I mean, honestly, what a shot. What are the odds that this man happens to have a perfectly placed bullet from this wide ass spread? Look how wide this spread is, bro. And the bullet, he shot. He shot. Apparently he shot the ground. And it's like, what? Now, granted, this thing has a wide bullet spread, so just because he's not center crosshair, I can believe it. It sucks, but I can believe it. Um, but it's a little crazy. If you notice, I really think he just hit his trigger on accident. Then he ADS'd um, and was trying to put it on you, but his aim was way off. Wolf, thank you so much for submitting your gameplay, brother. Really appreciate it. There's a lot of lessons to be learned in this video that we haven't really talked about in a while, so I'm really glad that we got to post this video. Um, one thing I'd recommend, just decision making as far as who to shoot at. That's what got you ultimately killed in the end. Again, if you know an enemy's in a position where he's got to leave cover to get safe from the zone, make sure you remain somewhat focused, not tunnel vision. You don't just want to ADS on him. Just keep it in your visual. That way, when you see him leave the compound, you can shoot him before he pushes closer and gets in a position where he can ultimately kill you. Um, but guys, again, thank you guys for tuning in. I really hope people are learning from this. I really hope that us putting ourselves in positions like this and putting on the internet for you guys to learn from. I'm hoping that when you guys run into situations like this, you guys can remember in the back of your head, oh shit, Savage said to do this. Hopefully I'm in the back of your mind just harping on you about the things you're doing and you're just learning and improving day by day. But guys, anyway, y'all have a good one. Thank you guys for the love and support. Again, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Join the Wolfpack today. Leave a like on the video. Join our Discord and follow us on Twitch. And until next time, guys, good luck in Warzone. Again, guys, thank you for tuning in. I'm really having fun doing this series, and I love the positivity in the comment section below. So if these videos are helping you in any way, shape, or form, please make sure to leave a comment and let me know. Also, check out some of these tips and trick videos if this one helps you at all. These may as well, and subscribe by clicking the link below. Y'all have a good one, and I'll see you next time.